you know, sending it to somebody that you trust or something too. So if you ever were, you know, heaven forbid it was a car accident or something like that and your phone gets destroyed, at least you've sent it to somebody else as well. Right, right. You might be able to, you know, to, you know, help you out if you ended up without your phone and your pet. Yeah. I know it's, you know, we got to come up with uh, different, um, different solutions during this time, um, you know, for people to figure out what they need to do, you know, because they still need to do it, you know, and I guess that's the whole point of us talking today is try to find a solution and, and remind people that, you know, you really, really have to, you really have to do this still. And you, yeah. you have to be aware of it. And I think it's more important than ever almost because, you know, the shelters and rescues and et cetera aren't working as they normally do. So if your right. pet does go missing, you know, not only that chip, you can't just rely 100% on the chip. You you also need to make sure that they have their ID. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of ID... One of my dogs wear several little tags, and one of them is kind of like a little emergency tag. Um, and I went, I, I found something on the carpet the other day, and I picked it up, and it was actually a little piece of that tag where it had peeled apart. And so it was like the part on his collar was was gone. It, it, oh, wow. You know, it's like a, a little lacquered tag. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, just a good reminder to look at the your dog's tags, you know, once a week or so, just have, really have a look at them and make sure they're legible and make sure that, you know, if, if they're like a, that was like, like a layered tag, that the layers yeah. haven't come apart and the, and it had just totally fallen off. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I noticed that um, one of my dog's tags, it's rubbed and it needs to be redone. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, I just don't think that there's, you can be too cautious, you know. I mean, it, it is just, there's just so many ways that something can go wrong. You just want to cover all your bases and then some. Yeah. And you know, yeah. maybe some people think that that's foolish or going overboard or something, but I certainly don't because boy, with what we do every day, we just hear, <laughs> we just hear every nightmare. Mm. You know, I know it. After another. Yeah. I know. And, and here yeah. in Florida right now during the summer and hurricane season or whatever, thankfully we, that hasn't been an issue yet and let's hope it's not but um Mm -hmm. we do get the storms every single day you know and every day we're going to expect you know three to five to seven uh pets found in the storm running like crazy you know scared to death and um rarely do they have any kind of um id on them and mm-hmm. so, you know, we have one today. I was talking with a girl that's holding on to one of them and it was found right after a storm and nice dog. It did have a collar on, but no ID, no chip. And we still haven't found the owner. And you, you got to think that, OK, if it's running from a storm, it's probably traveled a little bit of a distance, but you never know how far. Um, right. But we haven't been able to find the owner for some reason. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's a nice dog, and um, yeah. you know, you, I don't, uh, I don't know what else to suggest. I think they just had to expand their flyers. You know, they went out and walked the area. They knocked on doors, uh, nothing nearby. So I know that means they had to expand a bit. Yeah. Um, right. But it's frustrating, you know, because somebody yeah. somewhere is most likely looking for their dog. And I don't know why they don't know who to call or where to go. I, that one always right. escapes me as well. Um, right. You know, um, but it, it's so simple if people would just put a tag at least on their pet. Yes. yes. Yep. You know, we want to return these pets. We don't want them to end up, you know, in a shelter and then, um, you know, possibly being adopted or or worse, yeah. if, if they just don't do well in a shelter and they are deemed unadoptable. And it's not because they're a bad dog. It's just because of their they're so scared. So owners right. need to understand that, you know, that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes I feel like I, I am just like all doom and gloom here. But, you know, I, I mean, sometimes you have to 
what do they call that? Tough love. I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to try to get people to understand why, you know, why do we preach the the importance of this? You know, right. Well, I'll be undoom and gloom and tell you two quick updates because there were two that two cases that I had um, spoken about on your on the show in the past. And they were both long-term lost dogs, and both have been recovered. So one was Octavia, oh, the Border Collie, mm-hmm. um, missing, I think, about nine days. Um, so that was, and I know I had mentioned her on your show. And the other one was a little dog that had been dropped. Because of COVID-19, the, the vet tech was coming out to pick up the dog from the car and unfortunately dropped the dog. Yes, uh, you told me that one. Well, uh, mm-hmm. She had that dog has been recovered. It's been a oh, little bit God. over sixty days, and wow. she had been hit by a car. So she's had to have, and that was she was hit right away after she went, after she mm. ran off when she was dropped. Um, but she seems to be recovering well, um, and so yes, yeah, so that was a, that was not an easy dog to catch because she was so scared. Oh. Um, and but but that, but those were uh, good outcomes for those two dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I just talked last week on the show. We had uh, Karen on talking about Octavia. That was an amazing, amazing story. You know, and these mm-hmm. are the types of things that give people hope. You know, I I always love to talk about that because it is so so important for people not to give up and to always have hope. Right. You know that uh, they will find their pet, and and that you have to keep going. You know, it's hard, yeah. but you got to keep trying. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We didn't have a dog lost at a, a vet's office, but we've had several cats recently. One of them was recovered and, and one wasn't. And I worry about that one because it was, it was a senior kitty and uh, it's oh. lost like miles and miles from home because of COVID. They had to go to a different yeah. uh, office in a different County and um, it got, it bolted, you know, from the arms of, the tech and uh they put up um you know traps and they're just not having any luck at all and it's so sad you know wow now to me that would never occur to me to try to take a cat in my arms to uh, Mm. in a car to the vet clinic like when we do any sort of microchipping events cats must be in a carrier that's something you absolutely insist on yeah yeah because you know holding on to a cat it's like you know that's not easy Right. I know. And, you know, we just had a good story that I'll share with you real quick about a cat. And that brings it, it just brought it back to me was um, talking about keeping it in a, in a carrier. Well, we had this person who went out of town and left their cat with some friends in Sarasota and the cat escaped. So they posted it with us and it was a male, a male tabby cat. And, you know, they look all the same pretty much unless they have specific markings and there wasn't a chip or anything like that. And so a cat was found and a woman reported it to me as found. Well, the, the pet sitter friends decided that was the guy's cat and they went and got it. Well, you know, come to find out after the woman uh, gave the cat, she called me and she says, you know, I just don't think it was the cat. And so talking to her a little further, the cat was a female that she gave to them that lost a male cat. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh, now we got to get the cat back. Well, the owner had already the owner lived in Tampa, drove to Sarasota, picked this cat up, drove it back to Tampa. And I'm trying desperately to reach him to tell him, hey, you've got somebody else's cat. That's not even a male, <laughs> you know. So thankfully, the guy was good and he got back in touch with the original finder. They hooked up somewhere along the Skyway Bridge, I guess, and um she got the cat back, and and I said, just make sure that cat is in a, a carrier. You know, make sure it's in a carrier. Yeah. Well, long story short, the cat got returned to the finder, and the cat ended up being chipped, and it did end up getting returned to the rightful oh, owner. And it had, been missing, it had been missing for three weeks. So, wow. you know, I mean, crazy things happen. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that was a little Wouldn't bizarre. Have the cat had gotten away again, yeah. Oh, I know. Or ended up because the guy said, well, it's not my cat. I'm going to bring it to the shelter. I go, you can't bring it to a shelter in Tampa when it belongs in Sarasota. You know, it's got to get back here. It's got to get back here because they hadn't even scanned it yet for a chip. And thankfully, yeah. So, oh, my goodness. But, yeah, that 
that happened not under our watchful eye. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they made the uh-huh. they made the handoff before they let us know because oh my goodness, you know. Yeah. So, but it was bizarre. But wow. things like that happen, and and all the more reason for you to have ID tags and uh, chips on your yeah, pets. Right. Absolutely. Oh gosh. Absolutely. Oh, uh, boy. So, like any or like me that has has I have my my collars are stitched with their name and phone number, and then they have tags on their harnesses. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you can't be too you can't be too careful. Yeah. Well, Kathy, this this has flown by again. So, could you just uh, quickly let everybody know how to look up Lost Dogs of America and find all the important information that you share on your webpage? Yes, so we are, uh, so it's lostdogsofamerica.org is our website, and then our Facebook page is Lost Dogs of America. Um, so we're happy to um, have you come visit our page and then Facebook message us if you have a question, um, and we have lots of information there to share. Yeah, and as we know from last week's uh, interview about Octavia, you know, Karen told us how important it was and, and helpful it was to talk with you and how much you helped her understand, you know, about the different uh, parts of searching for Octavia and how helpful it was. So the information on your webpage is extremely educational, informative, and helpful. And the great thing about that whole thing is, is that she actually is on the board of the Humane Society in that county. And so now she's going to be able to share that information with people. She's going to be able to help more people. So yeah. the more we all help each other, the more we can help more pets get home. That's um, right. But it's just really... It really does does help when we can share the you know the educational stuff. Yeah, that's true. Well, Kathy, thanks again for being with me, and I look forward to talking with you again. Um, so I just want everybody to remember that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives, so please be sure they are microchipped and wearing their ID tags. And if they are chipped, as we've been talking about, be sure that that chip is registered and up-to-date. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.